Well, welcome to the November podcast, where we're going to highlight the latest papers uploaded to our website. Now, all content discussed is available in more detailed slide format at cytokinesignaling.com, our free resource website. Now, for November, uh, five papers have been added to the CSF website after our scientific committee vote, and I'd like to highlight in detail two of these in this podcast. Now, the first paper assesses the treatment persistence at healthcare costs for patients with rheumatoid arthritis when given different mechanism of action therapies compared with tumor necrosis factor inhibitor cycling. And the lead author here is Professor Benjamin Chastek from Optum in Minnesota. Now, data from commercial claims and Medicare Advantage are analyzed to determine the cost per persistent patient with rheumatoid arthritis after switching from tumor necrosis factor inhibitor to a different mechanism of action versus cycling within class to a TNF inhibitor. During the one year period after the first TNF inhibitor claim, patients either cycle to another TNF inhibitor or switch to a different MOE. These therapies included abatacet, toclizumab and tofacitinib. The outcomes and costs were examined for one year post-index date, including total rheumatoid arthritis related costs of diagnosis and treatment and cost per persistent patient over one year. The duration of treatment persistence was also examined during the study up to two years after the initial treatment switch or cycle. Now, what are the key results? Well, median treatment persistence post-index was 366 days. The confidence interval was 311 to 618 days for MOA switchers and 279 days with a confidence interval of 257 to 306 days for those cycling within class to TNF inhibitor. The one year treatment persistence rate was 47% for MOA switchers and 40% for TNF inhibitor cyclers. The mean costs for the one year post index change were significantly lower among MOA switchers than TNF cyclers. The estimated costs per persistent patient were also lower among MOA switchers compared with TNF cyclers. And from this, I think we can conclude that patients who had switched to different MOA treatments had a higher treatment persistence and lower overall healthcare costs than TNF cyclers, resulting in lower healthcare costs per persistent patient. Healthcare plans contributed most of the patient care costs, and that's important because we need to think about this across different geographical, locale, and different healthcare economic systems. Now, reimbursement policies that require patients to cycle TNF inhibitors before they switch to a different mode of action may therefore result in suboptimal outcomes for both patients and payers. And this is something I think we'll need to look at very carefully going forward. Now, the second paper I'd like to highlight this month looks at baricitinib efficacy and safety in elderly patients with rheumatoid arthritis. And the lead author here is Professor Roy Fleischman, University of Texas Southwestern Medical Center in Dallas. Now, data were pooled from two studies of patients with an inadequate response to conventional synthetic DMARDs, the RA BUILD study and RA BEAM. Now, just a quick reminder for you, RA Build was a 24-week study that included 684 conventional synthetic DMAR inadequate responder patients. RA Beam was a 52-week study that included 1,305 methotrexate inadequate responder patients. This was a post hoc analysis completed in both trials, giving comparative values for the placebo and baricitinib 4 milligram treatment groups. The primary endpoint was ACR20 response at week 12. Demographic efficacy and safety data were collected from patients aged less than 50, between 50 and less than 65, and more than or equal to 65 years of age. A logistic regression model was then used to detect significant interactions between treatments and subgroups. And turning again to the results, well, the, the ACR 20, 50 and 70 response rates at week 12 for both placebo and baricitinib 4 milligrams were similar to the ACR 20, 50, 70 response rates at week 24. The proportion of patients who achieved remission or low disease activity based on the CDI or SDI were similar in placebo treated and baricitinib treated patients across the three age groups respectively. And that's really the crux of this. Efficacy was similar in patients regardless of age group. 
Now, efficacy, of course, is only one side of the equation. We always have to think about safety, prima non cherry. Older patients, that is those patients more than or equal to 65 years of age, reported a higher percentage of adverse events, serious adverse events, and particularly serious infections. Uh, the incidence of serious infections, although similar in the younger age groups, was higher in baricitinib versus placebo patients aged more than or equal to 65 years. The third paper reviewed this month reports the analysis undertaken to better characterise the clinical aspects of herpes zoster events in patients with rheumatoid arthritis treated with tofacitinib. The lead author and indeed one of our CSS steering committee members was Professor Kevin Winthrop, Oregon Health and Science University School in Oregon. Uh, this month we also include two papers, each with a focus on the potential use of tofacitinib as a treatment for psoriatic arthritis. Now, this is really important. It sits outside our normal focus on rheumatoid arthritis, but this is the first fully extended indication based on the original work that came out of rheumatoid arthritis and the exploration of the potential for jackanibs in that group of diseases. And those papers were published by Professor Daphne Gladman and Professor Philip Mees, respectively, and I commend them to you. The, the short line summary is that tofacitinib offers a potential efficacious option now in psoriatic arthritis appropriate regulatory approvals allowing, of course. Well, that's all I have for you this month. Please don't forget that all materials are available in the publication section of the cytokinesignaling.com. I really do hope this information is helpful to you in your clinical practice and in your academic progress. Um, my best wishes for the moment.